Hi everybody, this is Lee, and I'm talking about a story that I saw at Truth Out. Um, it's concerning the concept of how economic justice and racial justice intersect. That for communities of color and then other communities um, who actually care about communities of color, um, that these are not separate issues, that there is inter- Section, meaning that they meet, that they are not separate and parallel, that one um, uh, informs the other and that there is intersection. And so people are combating this issue on various levels. This is only one. Uh, the name of this article is Beating Wall Street Means Fighting the Extraction of Wealth from Communities of Color. And so, um, basically, um, they're looking at an um, organization called Action Center on Race and the Economy, um, also known as ACRE. And Maurice VP Weeks, he's based in Detroit. And then Saqib Body, he is based in Chicago. And so, uh, basically, the idea behind the Action Center on Race and the Economy is that there's um, economic justice being done, looking at the role that Wall Street plays um, in affecting everyday life people. But what that organization does, ACRE, is to do the work that goes after Wall Street and corporations who are extracting wealth from communities of color with an explicitly racial bias. And so it's not one or the other, it's both. Um, and so there's been conversation about economic justice in the past um, on the left and that um, when uh, race is brought into the conversation, it's often through the lens of disparate impact. And so um, what they say is that when bad guys do bad things at the top, it has a disparate impact down below. And so that's what they do. They look at the various um, issues with a different kind of lens, um, saying that the actual function of how the companies operate is built upon the extraction of wealth from people of color. And so they talk about that. Um, they focus on um, things such as um, the mortgage crisis and how many uh, communities of color were affected, had their homes taken from them. And people tried to dismiss it as saying, well, they got loans that they couldn't pay back or they bought homes that they couldn't afford. And so whatever. And then um, here, again, there's a different lens saying that these people um, in certain zip codes or of certain backgrounds were targeted with different types of uh, loan terms and that um, these were called due and then the mortgage crisis resulted. There were foreclosures and that um, Steve Manenchkin, uh was such a one who... Um, did these things uh, with his um, bank and took homes from people, rented them homeless uh, for pennies on the dollar. Okay, and so there's also um, the concept of Wells Fargo, the bank. Uh, Wells Fargo has come under fire for uh, its role in uh, providing uh, a line of credit for pipeline building that has affected negatively indigenous populations. But then also Wells Fargo has also been uh, a funder of the private prison building industry, which also targets communities of color, uh, certainly African Americans, Latino, and um, also Native American communities. And so uh, Wells Fargo is also a funder of the prison industrial complex. And so a lot of things are happening at the top and affect people down below. Um, they also talk about the concept of um, bargaining for the common good, various issues like that. And then um, also um, the Chicago Teachers Union comes up in this article. Um, something interesting that I saw was the tendency of people to see police violence 
and prisons as an issue that cannot be part of the of a economic justice campaign. They say, well, again, we're doing economic justice. We're not that's identity, that's racial, that's Black Lives Matter stuff. And um, clearly, it's clearly described in this article how they're related and intertwined, and that one feeds the other. And that policing and prisons are at the intersection of economic justice and racial justice. And even Marissa Alexander, um, that I talked about in a previous video, where she had to actually pay for her um, ankle bracelet monitoring, she had to pay court fees and fines, and come up with thousands of dollars, um, maybe about ten thousand dollars, in order to even after she was released from her prison term for standing her ground that she had to come up with this money and um, pay into the uh, prison system um, even after she was released. So it, it is actually um, a matter of economic justice. Um, and so um, in this article they talk about the fact that um, they are working on a campaign um, against what they call police brutality bonds. Um, and they describe it, um, how when a city reaches a settlement for a police brutality, the city doesn't have or doesn't want to pay out the cash out front for the settlement. And so the city finally settles with the family for maybe $28 million or something like that. And so instead of just writing a check for $20 million from the general fund, they instead issue a, fund, a, a bond for that amount of money. And um, the bondholders always get paid. And so even if um, you come into an economic crisis in a certain city and the city is running out of money and they have to choose where to put uh, the dollar, the dollar goes to the bondholder, um, not the schools or other city institutions. It's the bondholder that gets the money. And so uh, that's an issue of how um, uh, police violence informs uh, economic justice, that uh, physical violence incident leads to ec ongoing economic violence because it's um, taking money away that would otherwise go into the community. It has to go to the bondholder. And so um, instead of black schools. And those bonds uh, exist in Chicago and other cities. And so they're working on um, bringing a campaign um, against that. Okay, and so um, I'm going to go ahead and post a link to this article in the description so people who are uncertain of whether they should be working on one or the other, or they've been told, like, no, no, we're, you know, that's racial. We're working on economic. Um, I think reading this article is educational so people can understand how they are related, that for many communities, uh, it's not one or the other, it's both, and that they are intertwined. And so it's necessary to work on several levels, that you really can't ignore one, um, you do at your own peril. And so hopefully um, that might be understood, and I'll just post a link in the description and let people read up. Good luck.